1979, during the Christmas season, someone murdered Michelle Martinko. Michelle Martinko didn't come home on the night of December 19th in 1979, and later, police found her stabbed to death. Someone killed Martinko on December 19th, 1979. Authorities found her body with stab wounds to the face and chest. She was found inside her family's Buick, parked at Westdale Mall. Investigators consider the homicide to be personal in nature. Police say there have been more than 100 new tips in the case of Michelle Martinko. I had seen that across the country, social media had been becoming more involved in cold cases and getting people across the nation talking. And I said, well, you know, I can do something that's easy to do. I can set up a, a Facebook site and see what happens. And it kind of made me reach out to the Cedar Rapids Police Department. Hey, what is going on in the case? And then talking with the detective at the time, uh, he said that there had been no activity on, on social media with the Cedar Rapids Police Department. Of course, every December there's news stories. Uh, it's the anniversary of the death. And so uh, people start typing in on the computer and they just come and find us. So the way that Facebook site is set up, they have to actually ask to join. So there's no uh, trollers. They have to actually have to uh, send their name in and get approved to be a part of the site. So that way we know that there's at least a, a more than just a passing interest in the case. I didn't know what to hope for at first. I thought, well, maybe it'd just be a place to maybe honor her memory or, yeah, I didn't really know what we were going to do with it at first. I hoped that maybe it would be a way to get people talking. What I found out, and what I still hope now going forward, I found out that people want to talk about the case. There's still kind of a, a hesitation to go to the authorities they don't march into the police department and they, they kind of don't want to get involved but they still want to tell what they know or what they think and so what happens is a lot of uh, leads have come through it. Uh, private message, they, they will private message me and say hey here's a name, here's someone I thought could have been involved or did you look at this person or have you thought about this and, and so there's an understanding, everyone knows on that site that if I hear anything it's going to go straight to the detectives anyway but it's kind of become a go-between. They're more comfortable talking to someone maybe anonymous like me, and then they can just kind of stay in the background. And so that has happened. And there's, uh, the police have told me that it's the, the, probably the biggest source of active leads that they get really? is the Facebook site, yeah. A lot of the things that have come up have been things that have been in the files or have been hashed over through the years, but there have also been a number of new leads, new names that have come out of it, new situations. My goal, early on then was to try to find out who Michelle was as a person because all there really was to the Martinko story year after year was the grainy black and white picture and high school senior died at Westdale Mall, was in choir, twirled baton, and that's it. You didn't know who she was. So uh, this has brought out a lot of people that knew her, uh, people that have been willing to talk and kind of create a picture and a, a biographical sketch of who, who she was as a person which in itself then has uh, led us to see what circles she was running in, kind of things that she was involved in that would give the police an idea of, okay, here's some names that we can talk to that knew her from this venue or this part of her life. Talking yeah. about leads, what, what kind of leads? Uh, many times it will be names. They'll say, have they looked at this particular person? It'll be, he was my boyfriend at the time and he was violent and he, you know, he, knew Michelle from this party. So we get a lot of that. A lot of the same names keep cropping up. So then it's nice to be able to say, no, they've looked into him, they've ruled him out, they've taken his DNA and cleared him. Uh, so that's probably 90% of the type of leads. It's specific people, specific situations. That, that's probably one of the top questions always asked. Why, why do people care? Uh, I think it's because Cedar Rapids is a close-knit community. It certainly was more so in 1979. It's never been a big city. It thinks it is sometimes, but it's still a small town, and they break it up in the quadrants. So it's northeast side. It's it's the girl next door. That could be your sister. That could be your your friend. And I think it was just a very personal thing because it wasn't common. Uh, we live in the 21st century where this stuff happens on a 
day-to-day -day basis more. But back then it was unheard of, mm -hmm. and it changed the way people lived, changed the way parents thought about letting their kids play outside even. And uh, so it became part of our lives growing through that. It's the Michelle Martinko, how could that person get away with it? And I say, so people, many people take it personally, that they would consider it a personal victory to get justice in this case. Does the killer follow my Facebook page? That would be interesting. I think if he's alive, he does.